Uh, good morning. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost before the lunch, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk in this talk. We're gonna talk about the uh, how we how we organize the how we how we organize Ubicon Europe and Ubicon Asia, and we we also gonna talk about some um, behind stories uh, behind the uh, some organizing the events and. Uh, before we get started, uh, uh, let us introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Youngbin. Um, I'm from the uh, Korean local community, and I'm one of the organizer there. And I'm also uh, one of the uh, organizers of the Ubukun Asia last year and also this year. And uh, for the work, and I also I work for the uh, CloudMate, which is a MSP company in the Korea. And I usually uh, work with the, some building some internal products for the sub uh, people use and uh, for now uh, we have some introduction of the Tiago. Yep. Hey, so I'm Tiago. I came from Portugal. I'm member of the Portuguese local community. I'm here because I was one of the co-organizers of the Ubucon Europe in Sintra. Don't know if you've been there, uh, but we're going to talk about it. I also have a podcast. I learned yesterday that it I already knew, but it's the, the, the only active Ubuntu podcast, just done in Portuguese, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about it. And I pay my bills at, currently as a DevOps at a Portuguese company called Angle Solid. Hmm. So uh, about the sessions, uh, we're going to first talk about the Ubucon. Uh, what is Ubucon? Uh, maybe some, some, of, some of you might heard about the Ubucon already. Maybe some of you not heard about yet. So we're gonna talk about the first, and after that, uh, we'd like to introduce some uh, previous editions of the Ubicon Europe and Ubicon Asia. And after that, we're gonna talk about the uh, some whole process of the organizing and uh, completing the Ubicons, like uh, some 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 beginning of the uh, organizing the event and some during the event. What we do uh, during the event and. Some other after Ubicon stuff, something like working with the photos, videos, like you also uh, work with the, some um, accounting. Yep, you're gonna talk about that. And first thing first, uh, let me some let me give you some introduction of that, about the Ubicons. Uh, the Ubicons basically is also some kind of the some gathering of the Ubuntu community. Like we're just having a uh, gathering here in the Ubuntu Summit or some other uh, Ubuntu Developer Summit. But uh, I think the most difference of, between the Ubucons and Ubuntu Summit would be uh, how, how uh, who, who usually organize the event. So like the Ubuntu Summit and the UGS here, uh, it is usually organized, organized by the, the canonical people. And uh, compared, to, compared to the Ubuntu Summit, the Ubucons are uh, fully driven and organized by the Ubuntu community. So, uh, of course, Canonical also um, participate in the some and provide some help with the uh, organizing event. But uh, the Canonical at the Ubuntu, uh, they are usually like uh, more like a uh, just a sponsor rather than a uh, organizer. So, it's fully driven by the community and uh, Ubuntu also usually uh, uh, give some more focus on the local communities like. If you ever look at the some list of the Ubicons, there's a, like uh, Ubicon Europe, and which focuses on the uh, European uh, local communities, and we have uh, Ubicon Asia focus on the uh, Asian local communities. Uh, I I heard that there will be, there's also a uh, Ubicon America, right? Oh, Latin this America. Latin America. Uh, Latin America. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Yep. And there's also uh, Ubicon at scale, right? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So it's. Uh, we so get some more focus on the local communities. And Tiago will be some, give some introduction of the uh, previous editions of the Europe. So uh, in Europe, there have been four editions. The first one was in Germany. It was a big surprise. Yeah, <laughs> every game. Yeah. It was in a perfect place called Unperfect House. I think it's something, yeah. Did I spell correctly? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we don't use uh, group photos at the moment. So this one was the best I got from there. 
can see Jane Silver, actual CEO at the, at the at time. She was there also. I'm also there. If you can find me, find Wally. Uh, <laughs> then there was a next one. If you can uh, move the yep. slide. Next one was naturally on France because the French local is very well organized and very consistent. So after the, uh, at the end of Ubucon in Hessen, uh, they they stand up and say like next year will be in Paris. Uh, no group photos also, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, uh, uh, it, it happened, they, they, they do Ubucons every six months there, so they just make it bigger that time, oh. at the time, and, and invited everyone from all over Europe, all over the world. Mm. Oh, they, the, they don't count the numbers because there's no registration and no uh, entrance uh, control. But from they they expect to have like 600 people, but not all Ubuconers because that's a, that's a, it's Cita des Sciences, something like that. It's like mm -hmm. a cultural center, and it's opened not just for Ubucon but for other events. So the 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 entrances were counted like globally. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there was the third edition, was in, in Spain, in a place called Chichon, Gichon, Nice Sidra. I don't know if you've been there. <laughs> this, this is the group photo. Uh, the venue was a very special place, very historical place from the municipality. Uh, and the, I think it was here that we started to uh, aggregate cultural events to the Ubucons, not just the, the talks during the day, but also the, the parties, dinners, lots of sidra, lots of sidra. It was here, <laughs> <laughs> it was in one of those uh, sidra nights that I, I remember that on the, the LTS from so 2018 was almost delayed because there was some probably one of the flavors and some guys were drinking sidra and two doors, two doors to the right, there was some two guys fixing bugs and trying to, <laughs> to make schedule. Uh, and it came on time, okay? It's like 10 minutes before midnight, it was out. So, and then finally, we have the edition in Sintra, which I co-organized, and it was, in my opinion, the best, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was four days of talks, we have three days of cultural visits around the, the village of Sintra. Uh, we have an agreement with the municipality so that we have free entrances on the, the most uh, popular monuments in Sintra. We organized some events at night, some dinners, and some. we have um, an event at the brew factory with some bagpipes that we imported from the previous edition in Spain. So we, it, it was a full pack. There were some uh, uh, brave uh, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu members that came two days early and they served before the pre-Ubucon and before the Ubucon. So wow. for, some, for some of the, the people there, the Ubucon lasted for more than a week. Okay, so uh, uh, it was a really, a really good experience. Oh, so it's now no Yongbin. my trend? Yep. Uh, compared to other Ubucons like the uh, Ubucon Europe or Latin America, if Ubucon Asia is a uh, quite new event. We just started our event last year, uh, which was uh, a virtual event uh, due to COVID-19. So uh, everything was online. We just uh, provided a video call for the, some um, online sessions. And we also used to have some uh, workshops on the uh, online. Uh, it was more like uh, some kind of tutorials and we also, you know, in the, in the online event, uh, if you just uh, keep watching the uh, streaming, you get really boring, right? And we also prepare some uh, virtual, virtual places to uh, have a meeting and uh, uh, talk to each other. It's like uh, this one is a uh, gather town. So we provided uh, these kinds of places on, online so you can talk to each other. And yep, uh, we also had some uh, group photos, of course, on the video calls. Uh, it was taken uh, right, right, right before finishing our Ubcon last year, and and other many uh, some interesting activities. Like, like we also have some 
uh, social events at the ghetto town, such like uh, uh, finding a treasure. Uh, if the people find the treasure, we, we just provide some uh, gift code for the, some kind of um, swag, like t-shirts, hoodies. Yep. So that was uh, our some, uh, previous edition of the Ukraine Asia. And this year, we are organizing first in-person Ukraine Asia in Seoul, uh, which is only two or three weeks away, ahead after this Ubuntu Summit. <laughs> We are really working hard and we've been <laughs> submitting some papers. <laughs> so uh, if you're interested and plan to uh, fly to Korea, <laughs> it would be nice to see there. So yes, we are working hard on the uh, in-person events. So let's talk about the organizing UbuCon. Thiago will be giving some uh, introductions. So I will talk about how we organize in Portugal. So I cannot speak about the others so that I wasn't there. But in Portugal, the first thing we did was, uh, and this should go at baby steps, but with, with a, a fast pace, uh, we start by building a team. We cannot do it alone. Um, and it's very important because it's with our team that we decided when we want to do it and where it's the best place to do it. Uh, never decide that alone so that you can then fail isolated. It's not a good, it's not a good deal. Uh, then you must choose how many sessions. It was the, the next step, how big we want the Ubukon to be. How many days, how many tracks, so that how another track is like, uh, I don't know, two, three, four days of full work for, for the, the, the scheduling the, the talks to get some volunteers to be in the room and to uh, um, make fixing everything so that everything went uh, uh, the way we, we expected. And we have to define the timelines, when we're going to open the call for papers, when do we want to schedule the talks, when we ought to, to do the, the call for sponsor or for volunteers, when are, are we uh, getting the venue and talking, in our case, we talk with the municipality for the for the venue. So mm -hmm. defining timelines at this time is very, it's very important. But Youngbin is going to continue with the organization, the boring part. Uh, yeah, this is quite boring part. And after you got the venue, uh, yeah, yeah, first, thing, first thing will be the acquiring a venue. Uh, earlier would be better because the uh, most, most huge venues, uh, they, get, they, get the, uh, they get booked really early. So you need to uh, consider uh, getting a venue uh, at least about the, at least six months ago or one year would be much better. So, and if you're looking for a venue, you, should, you, you shouldn't just uh, uh, consider about the, uh, what, they, what the venue provides. You also look at the, uh, what kind of things are near, available nearby the venue, something like some infrastructures, like uh, uh, if, there any, if there's any metros or like restaurants. And if you plan to have a conference dinner, you also look at if there are any hotels or banquets. And after you get the venue, uh, you will need a, a budget plan so that you can uh, estimate uh, how many sponsors you need to gather or uh, whether, you, uh, whether you decide to uh, have a paid registration or not. So uh, to make a budget plan, uh, if you don't have any reference yet, uh, you might need to also get uh, some uh, quotations from the, some many suppliers, something like uh, if you want to bring some swags, you need to ask the swag supplier, suppliers for the, some quotations. Like uh, also venue, you also, you also need to ask the venue providers. So uh, how many how many quotations for the uh, renting the venue? And after you have the budget plans, and uh, the local community is usually just uh, um, some loosely coupled some organization, right? It's not a legal entity. So we we also need to look for. Uh, some physical hosts who are gonna help with uh, managing your funds for the event. So they're gonna have your uh, funds, tax, uh, something like issuing invoices for your sponsor, sponsors, and they will also help with you with the some like signing on with the sponsorship contracts, and like receiving funds from the sponsor is also uh, uh, done with the, some help from the uh, physical host. So it is quite essential to have a. Uh, physical host if you want to receive uh, uh, some funds with the, uh, from the sponsors. Uh, so next will be the uh, calling for proposals and sponsors. This is also quite important part. Uh, there is so many stress during the something like uh, call for proposals and 
sponsors like uh, during the like coming for proposal uh, I think you would really work hard and the gathering some speakers but uh, you would not usually see that uh, they do they just uh, that much proposals even you work hard but uh, uh, please note that uh, many speakers usually they just uh, submit the proposal just before the deadlines so uh, you don't need to worry about that uh, if you if you think it's not much enough maybe you can also uh, extend the deadline that would be also helpful so that they can rush in to submit their proposals <laughs> and there are some uh, also some pains with the some reviewing the proposals like some sometimes there are some duplicate topics and we can also have some uh, spams not really related related to Ubicons and there can be also some too long abstracts we cannot even read or review. <laughs> yeah, and also uh, for me, uh, coming for a sponsor was also quite difficult. Um, same, uh, same last year and this year was, was also difficult. So uh, to look for sponsors, uh, you will need to usually uh, talk with the, some, the marketing department of the sponsors because uh, they usually sponsor the event for the two uh, to uh, marketing uh, some marketing purposes like to some hire some uh, some developers engineers and uh, promote their companies so you're gonna need to talk with them marketing team and this will be also better with the uh, audio contacts so that because they usually have some limited budgets so audio will be better and you also need to um, think about the uh, which which like uh, whether you're gonna put the uh, attendees first or sponsors first, because both are really both important, right? Really both are important for the events. If we don't have any sponsors, we have no funds. We don't have any attendees. We just don't have any events, right? Both are very important, so it's uh, quite difficult to choose or um, how can you find some balance between them? And uh, for me, the sending some sponsorship proposal like emails, uh, it was feel like I uh, spreading my resume <laughs> with the, some, uh, when I uh, when getting a first job. So yes, I was like, uh, if you're like spreading a lot of proposals with the, some bunch of sponsors, like you can usually find their contact on their website. <laughs> yes, I was looking, working very hard with that. And selecting proposal is also quite difficult because uh, well, always the source are limited because of the some time and some physical things, right? Physical spaces. So uh, you might need to drop some uh, proposal, even that looks very nice. So you will need to choose some other things instead. And uh, in case of the uh, Ubukon Asia this year, we have uh, some kind of uh, interpretations on the main hall. Well, it would be nice to assign every uh, talks on the main hall, but uh, you know the if you have a lot of talks, but you cannot really assign them, assign everything on the main hall. So some some sessions will be also uh, assigned in some other rooms. So it should be that should be also something you should consider. And inviting speakers in person is also something different. It's also something difficult due to some uh, your budget limitations or. It can be also something related to your free test. So there can be also a lot of works behind uh, inviting these speakers, like some booking some flights, hotels. And uh, in my experience, working with the visa is was the quite compl complicated and difficult things. Uh, let me show let me show you how I work with the visas on the next slide. So uh, yeah, these are my papers for the visa invitations. So uh, fortunately, um, uh, most most MSC just requires a uh, PDF file invitation, so I can just send the PDF to the speakers, so they can they can apply for the visas. But some MSC requires something like uh, uh, provide a original printout with a stamp and send it physically with the uh, postal services. So that was quite uh, tricky things to uh, deliver the. Uh, invitation letters, so this one is a, uh, and some embassy also requires some kind of uh, notarizations. 
So I need to visit the law firm and notarize the, notarize the letter. So it was quite difficult things. And, but luckily, we have all speakers on the uh, Ubuntu Summit this year. So I met them and just give them, uh, deliver them in person, luckily. But uh, if, we, if, we, if I don't be, if I won't be, uh, if I couldn't meet them on the uh, Ubuntu Summit, maybe I might need to send them the invitation with the, some postal services and it might take much more time. Yeah, it's also some kind of pain with the, some inviting speakers. And Tiago will talk about the, some call for volunteers. So uh, another problem uh, could be the volunteers because we are not canonical. We are just a yeah. community. <laughs> we don't, yeah, okay. don't have a bunch of employers to help us out during the event or pre-event or the post-event. So having volunteers is just, it can be really painful. Uh, we, we in Portugal have like a, 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 an expressive number of volunteers, but before the, the, the people showed up, it was like <laughs> real anxiety. So how do you call it? So, so we go to the, the Ubuntu community, of course, but we go to the other communities aside. So who's want to help and uh, it's going to be fun, come on. Uh, and it, uh, but if this relation didn't happen, it could be really a mess because we have like a really big venue and it's always like the water bottles or the microphone or opening the, the doors, closing doors, closing the lights on, not lights off, that kind of, of, of simple and small tasks. But this is the last slide. This is just a part, just what I could find, a part of the volunteers from the, from the UbuCon in Sintra. I don't have the, the, the full group of volunteers because this was just taken uh, on the last day and some volunteers didn't, uh, uh, didn't uh, have been there for the, for the, the, the all four days of the UbuCon. So sorry about the others that don't show on this mm. picture. Uh, the next, in the next slide, we are going to see some practical, so this is the dark side, this is the pain point. So now it's the more uh, uh, obvious things we need to, to take care. So when we, when we organize um, Obucon, we need uh, a nice website, we need a nice address, web address, so that these things can be, start being published and shared on, uh, um, on our, our private or public channels inside and outside of the community because this is event not just for the, the community but for everyone that, that wants to be um, a part of it. Uh, we have the social networks of course because we then share it and we must be there. It's a, it's a pain but we must be there uh, and we need to have a mail address. It's, it's a, um, a basic form of contact that we use for almost everything, for sponsors, for call for papers, for notifications, for almost everything. We did, and I think it's, it's the obvious thing to do, we did a mailing address, that, uh, a mailing list, that, a distribution that goes to all the, all the core team members so that everyone gets informed. We were in, in Portugal, we got help from a platform, I don't know if you know it, it's called Free Scout. It's like a, 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 a a global inbox that everyone can see what shows uh, what what arrives and everyone can see who sends what to whom uh, mm. it, it helped really um, a lot then for the for the call for papers and for the scheduling and for the, the um, it was basically that the, the call for papers the approvals and the, the scheduling uh, we use a platform called pre talks uh, it's used uh, in several events. It's more popular than the others. Uh, in Asia, uh, Youngmin used the Eventi. It's another platform. Just use something. Uh, don't use just a spreadsheet because it can be really painful to yeah. manage. Uh, and in the case of uh, Ubucon Asia, they did uh, receive some payments. So don't forget to find ways to receive money for tickets in case of Asia. We had just uh, received some money from some of the events that we need to make the previous reservation, but it wasn't uh, really hard to do. So in the next mm. slide, thank you. Yeah. We, some, some uh, uh, thoughts about who, who, what's the best things to do to, for things to work. And we uh, uh, think that a nice design, uh, if you can find a designer, don't, don't trust on the guy that just opens GIMP or Inkscape and just makes his two logos. So we, we, 
we had a, a, a designer that did all, uh, uh, all other um, stuff for the community already, so he just did everything else, the signage, the postage, the shirts, we'll talk about that in... <laughs> <laughs> so you've been there, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's good to have a local or a global uh, uh, um, social media partner because it helped a lot. Uh, if that media partner is Canonical, it helps uh, even more. So everyone usually follows what Canonical publishes. So if Canonical, it normally does, uh, 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 amplifies our um, posts, it helps to uh, get uh, visibility. You can go to the, to the traditional ways and print some posters and go to schools and go to universities and, and make some, some college. And do, uh, you can also, we didn't do it, but I know that yeah. in Asia they do that. We paid some ads on social mm -hmm. networks so that uh, it can be uh, spread wider. So, this is also marketing. Uh, this is difficult to understand for people that don't went to Sintra, but I will explain. I need to put and remember this picture and the next one because this was actually the right poster that we have on the front of the venue. The right poster <coughs> with the wrong logo from the municipality, the guys from the venue. And when we uh, uh, fixed the logo, the designer got messed up. And what showed up here was Ubucon Portugal 2019. I don't know why, but just two days uh, ahead from, for the Ubucon, we have to reprint all the badges, all the, all the signage, everything. And nobody looked at the title of the poster. So when we were settling things up in the day before the Ubucon, say like, ouch, <laughs> maybe no one will notice this. And it, it, it stayed there for four days and it, it's on YouTube, you can watch it. On the last day, I did a presentation talking about the bug on the poster. <laughs> and said, oh, that's why, that's why it was called Portugal. So we, we, like, we like Portugal, we love Portugal, but this was actually Ubucon Europe, not Portugal, okay? <laughs> so, next slide, swag. Everybody loves swag. Uh, we prepared a nice kit uh, to deliver to every participant. This one has a bug also. We printed 300 shirts like this one. I call it the bug shirt <laughs> because it doesn't, doesn't say Ubucon Europe also. Because this one wasn't, wasn't reprinted. This, this was wrong from the beginning. But <laughs> another way, uh, 10 people on the core team and nobody noticed that thing wrote there wasn't Ubucon Europe. Oh, forget about it. It's like it's going to be worth millions in the, in the near future, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Then we have the, 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 the heads or the... They don't need to be paid, but you can have nice uh, um, reshareable posts for the social media because then we, we spread our word wider and wider. Um, and uh, that was done. I, I don't get the ones from the Ubucon uh, Europe, but I have the ones from, <laughs> from Asia. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And I'll pass my ball to Youngbin again. Ah, thanks. So um, I'm going to talk about the, some uh, bit about the community partner. In the Ubucon Asia, we have some concepts of the community partners. It's something inspired from the, the First Asia's community partners. So we uh, work with some um, some few other uh, local communities to uh, work with the, some some promotions to spread our event even much further. So they should also have some their our they should also have some kind of their own networks so that they can also spread our events. And like uh, this is for example we leverage the some kind of uh, we have some partnership with the OpenStack Korea. So we ask them to spread our event event and. Uh, on the right, this is a, uh, a Linux user group in the Indonesia, and uh, I didn't expect it, but they even have uh, some kind of roadshow to uh, introduce about the Ukraine Asia. So it really helped to uh, spread our event, and 
uh, bring even much diverse uh, participants and even much more uh, people to the uh, UBCON. So uh, you can also leverage some kind of um, some other uh, work with the other communities to uh, spread your events. So let's talk about the during the UBCON, what happens on the um, happening at the uh, on the on the, the middle of the event. So first thing would be managing some logistics. Logistics should be something like uh, uh, bringing some microphones uh, for the speakers and like water bottles. And it can be also working with some uh, receptions. So you can uh, help, help with the, some attendees to uh, uh, check in to the event, uh, give them the badge. Uh, there will be some important, uh, important things to uh, handle. And we also need to handle uh, recording or streaming of the, uh, each session so that we can also um, have uh, some recordings of the uh, talks and you can also uh, watch that uh, watch that uh, after the event. So, and if you want to uh, also stream your uh, event on the online, you also need to bring some other professionals, some uh, suppliers, or maybe you can also some bring some volunteers or some who have some professionals in this in the working with the streamings. And then you should also have uh, some moderators so that you can also manage each rooms and tracks. Okay, so that they can also uh, some introduce some speakers and uh, receive some um, some questions from the attendees and ask them to the speakers. And uh, the one one moderator cannot handle the every sessions right every rooms for the all time. So we should also have some multiple moderators and have some um, shift shift schedules for them. And you know you cannot just um, have a sessions in a row all time, right? We also need some, some kind of breaks. We also need to prepare some kind of um, coffee breaks. Maybe we can also place some, some kind of drinks or some snacks there so that they can enjoy with the, uh, while they're talking with the other participants. And distributing swags is also a bit important so that they can uh, some kind of uh, bring the, some kind of some t-shirts to their home and they can also uh, remember about the some memories about the some UBCONs. So next will be about the social events from the Tiago. Yep. So as we uh, as I told you before, uh, we have a, a, a full pack of, of social events before the UBCON and during the UBCON. So mm. for everyone that that uh, came with family, we had like the, the we had the, the visits, the cultural visits, the days before the UBCON. And then we have some after after the the every day we have some cult, some dinners some drinks some parties we celebrate the 15th birthday of Ubuntu in Sintra uh, and we had some the, oh the there's the brew uh, the, the brew factory oh. uh, in the in the top photo so uh, this was really challenging to organize also the social events because it's not just to everyone got there. No, we, we just fix the restaurant or fix the, the, the bar or the, the, the brew factory and we reserve everything. We had some, some drinks and some food prepared to receive uh, uh, and some payments mm. to, 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 for, for people to attend also. And we have to manage that part of the of the um, of the I don't know if it's a problem, but it's 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 made to be. Uh, but everyone loved it. I think uh, uh, that's what the, the the more vocal people uh, uh, told us, uh, and we and we enjoy doing it also. Uh, so the next slide will be the after uh, UbuCon, and I will pass my yep. ball to right. Youngbin again. Yep. Uh, let's also talk about the what should we do after the UbuCons. You know. Um, just saying, saying just uh, at the closing, you know, there's a, there will be some kind of closing speech at the UBCONS and just saying, see you next time, it's not an end of the UBCONS, right? We still have a bunch of things to do even after the UBCONS. Something like uh, we should also need to work with the, some kind of some photos and videos for the sessions. And uh, for, for, for the photos, you know, be work with the, some editing photos, maybe. We can also choose which photos to publish online. And uh, for the videos, uh, if you stream your events online, uh, there might be some kind of very long one videos, and you will need to split it onto each session's videos, which is a very boring and repeated job. And 
you also need some help from the volunteers. Maybe also you can also um, consider about the automating the process. So you also need to work, about, work on that. And we also need to publish, publish some numbers and statistics about your event. Something like how many participants, partic how many participants were on the event, or uh, what kind of job did they have, or uh, on which country they have participated. It's like uh, there can be some participants from the Korea, Japan, Taiwan, or like the like the Ubuntu summit. We can also have some participants from the Portugal, uh, US, maybe Canada, maybe. Yep, we can also have some statistics with that. And if we have some numbers and statistics, it would be also helpful for the uh, next organizers so that they can uh, estimate the estimate the uh, their event skills and their budgets. And it, it is also helpful for the uh, next sponsors so that they can estimate the about the next event and whether they can whether they decide to sponsor the event or not. And choosing the next location is also important because. Uh, it is only better to choose the uh, next location and the venue. So if you didn't decide the next location yet, uh, you will also uh, discuss and uh, make decisions. Uh, it can be some kind of accept, accept some some kind of call for host call for host from the uh, some organizing team who decide to uh, organize, or maybe you can also uh, just uh, help us have some discussions to make some. Consensus, uh, consensus on the uh, next locations. And working with the accounting, which is uh, boring, but important, right? Uh, and also managing some remaining funds. And about the uh, accounting, don't forget to uh, receive some um, post-event sponsorship funds. Um, so many big techs, because of their financial cycle, they frequently, uh, sometimes they pay their funds after the event. So don't forget to uh, receive that. And uh, about the some kind of hotels and venue, they also allow us to uh, pay, the, uh, pay the balance after the event. And you also need to, don't forget to pay for the uh, balance after the event. And yes, check if any financial loss. <laughs> if you don't have any financial loss, which is uh, good news, but uh, uh, if you have any loss, uh, you will need to deal with that, deal with that anyway. <laughs> so don't forget to check that. And uh, if you don't have any loss, which is uh, good news, maybe you can also uh, decide uh, what, do you, what, will you, what you will gonna do with the, some remaining funds. Maybe you can just keep it for the next events, maybe for your local events or some next Ubercon organizers. And Maybe you can also just donate the remaining funds to some open source project. Like uh, for the Ubuntu, we have uh, Ubuntu donation funding, right? Uh, you can also donate there. Maybe some other uh, open source projects you can also donate there. So, um, Tiago has some advice for the, uh, our next Ubuntu organizers. Yep. So, the first one is start organizing earlier. Okay, it's, it's always too late. When we start, so if yeah, we I agree. <laughs> plan with one year, one year ahead, I think it's it's uh, probably enough. But if if we started one year ahead, maybe we needed two more months. So earlier, the better. Uh, and don't be shy. We cannot we cannot do everything ourselves. So please uh, uh, ask for help and try to get help from previous organizers from. Uh, other communities that, that may not be Ubuntu related, but friends, because we have friends in all other places. And we work in IT, most of us, we are open sourcers. So please reuse, reuse, reuse everything you can. Okay, and don't, don't feel uh, um, sh ashamed to say no. We cannot say yes to everything. Sometimes we need to say no to sponsors or to speakers or to volunteers, to Sometimes we need to say no. It's important to, uh, to learn this also. Next slide, yep. please. We yep. have some resources that we can provide as we organized the, the editions before that we can provide to the next uh, uh, local that, that's willing to uh, make the next Tubucon. And we, uh, we have created or used social accounts. So it's no need to create new social accounts every year. So just we just 
pass the access and reuse and keep track of uh, uh, the, the historical posts and, and, and uh, everything that's involved. We, s we did some coding in Portugal. We did some coding for the, the editing of the videos and the templates. Uh, uh, and we published everything on GitHub. You just, you just go for a book on Europe GitHub and it's the first result in, uh, uh, in your perfect uh, um, search engine. And this was a real pain, so this is a bullet point, deserves a bullet point, so we can provide access to the DNS management. Because it's like, it's, it's nice and catchy if you get like the Sintra 2019 ubucon.eu, but who got the domain? Oh, it's some French guy. No, it's some German guy. I don't know who it is. <laughs> oh, it's you. Okay. <laughs> so we can provide DNS access to the so that you can get, uh, get a, a, a great subdomain for it uh, and it's good for SEO also if you if you search for Sintra 2019 first result <laughs> mm. most of the time uh, and we can also at least I, I and some some of the core team from Sintra can provide some extra help to help the others uh, the, the next local to organize uh, um, the next to book on uh, and it's basically this, so we have some time for questions. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'm like, uh, I'm uh, born in Kabul, so I'm contributing to Ubuntu for the past 15 years. I'm like half Indian, half European, like, oh. I'm a Hungarian now, so I'm a Hungarian Indian. So I was thinking like, uh, how do you decide uh, the next Ubuntu conference in Europe? Like, so uh, normally it's decided we appear in the hands <laughs> somewhere in the lobby. <laughs> yeah. So I remember that in Germany. I don't know how they how they decided to do it. They just did it. We did it because there was no Europe. Uh, yep. Next year, Paris. Yeah. When we were in Paris with the beer in the hand, the, the people was, was like uh, almost pushing this Portugal or Spain, Portugal or Spain, Portugal, Spain. So Marcos Costales took the lead and organized it in Spain. Wow. And we, when we went to Spain, we did like the French and we said like Portugal next year. Uh, so it's, it's simple. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing that the Ubucon Europe 2013 will be in Greece. Oh. Not related to, to what you said. No, nothing related with that. <laughs> so the Swiss one is around like one year before? The earlier the better, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Because uh, if you decide to, to do it at your place, at your, uh, at your own country, you need to contact the, the venues, the sponsors, mm. and you need to do it before Christmas, yeah. <laughs> before the end of the year. The, the, because everything is decided, the, the, the budget for the next year is yeah. closed until, until the end of December. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so the earlier, the better. Oh. Carmen, thank you. <laughs> next question? No? See. Sí. So, yeah. um, when deciding, you know, you've got a bunch of submissions for your papers, how do you, what do you, um, what kind of audience do you expect? So how do you, So, uh, in Portugal, I think that was one of the hardest tasks to choose mm -hmm. and to decline some thoughts. Uh, I think we just declined two okay. talks. Uh, and we, we, one thing that we want to do was to have big, uh, uh, big breaks uh, uh, so that if, if something gets uh, um, delayed, we have a big break to, to compensate that. So with big breaks, four tracks, uh, almost all submissions got accepted and we just needed to figure out what makes sense to, to be in the, in, the, in the room one, two, three on the main auditorium. It was just that, that decision that we did, needed to make. So because Ubucons, uh, we don't charge for tickets. We just ask for registration for the size of the t-shirt because we offer the t-shirt 
if you, if you offer a sticker, you don't need to, to know the size of, of the person, but if you offer a teacher, you, you, you should make it more or less the, the, uh, with the sizes appropriated. Uh, so, but I think that we have like 280 uh, uh, attendees and we make like 320 t-shirts because we did uh, something. And I think that the, at the time we did the t-shirts, we had like less than 100 uh, intentions to be there, registrations. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are lots of people that went to the UbuCon that didn't even register. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's open to everyone. Everyone can show up. Mm -hmm. We have lots of Ubuntu enthusiasts, but we have lots of curious people and some criticals also. Uh, we, they are everywhere. Uh, uh, so we, we, we declined two. Uh, it, it, it was, uh, I can talk to you further, but I'll sign off here. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't because of the subject. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, it's related to the code of conduct of, of yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, I guess part of my, uh, kind of ulterior motive for asking the question is in thinking about how, say, you know, I may be interested in how to how to gear a proposal that would be of interest to people attending and so trying to uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out um, we, one of my people we work with uh, is going to be presenting in, in Ucon Asia mm -hmm. and like trying to make sure like his talk will be of interest to people mm -hmm. I will I'll give you the example of our presentation here I've made a submission yeah. about Ubucon Europe Yongbin made a submission about Ubucon Asia okay. mm -hmm. and someone just like look at mm, why don't merge it and we did it uh, so uh, sometimes it's this is, this is not a, a one way uh, uh, um, right. process yeah. okay I think so just to back on that I think sometimes it's not so much the talk it's, it's about the thought right yep mm. sometimes you're, you're surprised because you go to something that you, you, you find there's not much to know about it and suddenly is yeah. amazing, the story is interesting, and everybody... It's the way you it. deliver, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, do you, so you said for Ubicon Europe, you don't, uh, you don't ask for pay for registration. Yep. Do you take donations? We had some sponsors. We have oh, some... So, right, so, uh, so I'm familiar with a, a conference in Portland, Oregon, that I, uh, it's a security conference, the B-Size conference, and so it's intended for like it's a local conference it's intended to be like here's a smaller less high profile conference where you can um, you know present what you're working on that's interesting but it's a little lower stakes than trying to be like oh I'm gonna go to DEF CON and present or I'm gonna go to something big uh, and as part of that one of the things they do is they try to like they try to make admission for free but they also say like, well, if you pay, you know, if you're willing to donate 25 or more, you know, then you're guaranteed to get a t-shirt or yep. something like that, um, right? And they end up, it, like the, the, the community around that conference is very supportive and it ends up contributing way more money than actually they can deal with that. They end up having- It's more or less like them, right? Mm. Yeah, maybe FOSDEM is- Yeah, is maybe the contribution is, is, is for the shirts, uh, but uh, yeah. No, but we, we, we haven't received any money from, from the attendees. We, we ask for sponsors and we have one private donator, okay, oh. okay? that provided some, I, I, I can say it, it's a thousand euros from a private donator mm. uh, that we don't know who he is. I think I know, but we don't know who he is. <laughs> so it's, it's an anonymous donator, but no, no direct contributions to the, f from the attendees, no. Okay. Um, the Ubkun Asia case is it's about different last year. Um, uh, we were we were a virtual virtual event last year, and we do uh, accepted some donations. We offer some kind of donation tickets, and people can just uh, set the amount they want. And uh, for the some um, people who bought the donation tickets, we just offer some kind of uh, some the uh, some coupons for buying some swags, or we also um, uh, display their names on our website. So we have uh, some kind of uh, specific pages for uh, listing the, the individual patrons. So uh, I think we, we 
or for something like that. And uh, we're also doing some kind of similar things uh, also this year. Yep. Uh, I have a question about attendees. Um, specifically, how do you convince attendees to give two days or even a week of their time right, uh, mm. to attend? Do you go sometimes even go, go to their managers to send out invitation why attendees should give two days or a week of their time? Because they might be part of a critical team, right? Yep. So, in Portugal we did four days. Yeah. But it oh. was two work days and two weekend days. So that people can come on the work days or on the weekend. Because one thing I learned, at least in Portugal, if you want to make a professional event, it must be on, on, a, on, a, on a weekday. And if you want to go like... A, a, a community uh, amateur, uh, not to call it, uh, event. You do it on the weekend, so we just get both, so that maybe you cannot attend the four days of of the Ubucon, but at least you can do two. Mm. If your employer gives you the two days, you 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 will be on Thursday on Friday, and it, if he doesn't, you just go on on Saturday and Sunday. But we don't convince no one; just publish things. It's like it's going to be great. Show up. It's <laughs> Just this. Yeah, I think Ukon Asia is also similar. We didn't really um, convince uh, the attendees to join the Ubukon. Maybe uh, rather than uh, we just um, do some marketing with the contents about about the our sessions. That so we are we are currently posting some uh, some posting about the some each sessions that some some short introductions. So we can just let them. Uh, we can just uh, tell them that there will be some interesting session. Inter interesting sessions so you might be interested to join so yep uh, that is what you what you usually do more questions so when is the next group call you <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to to add a post to to, to the panel yeah <laughs> a post it. Here, right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep i will help okay so thank you Grab a badge if you don't have. <laughs>